The movie begins shortly, where a company has created human-like robots called simulants. These simulants are programmed with four strict rules, they can't harm humans, can't improve themselves, must follow government regulations, and must always obey humans, as they were designed to help them. Evan and Faye, a married couple, live happily with their older simulant, who takes care of their chores. This allows Faye to focus on her painting and Evan to enjoy playing the piano. One day, they have a car accident, and the car falls off a cliff. Since then, Evan has had nightmares, often waking up alone. Faye avoids a certain bedroom, and things become awkward between them. He can't play the piano anymore, which frustrates him, and she becomes uncomfortable. Whenever he tries to talk about his dreams and the accident, she changes the subject. Meanwhile, Detective Kessler from Artificial Intelligence Compliance Enforcement, AICE, is searching for Esme, a wanted simulant who has been offline for three years. An informant gives Kessler clues, leading him to an apartment building. He uses a special earring to activate an eye scanner, finding Esme in apartment 404. He tries to shut her down, but she resists, injuring him and fleeing. Evan joins the chase but loses her. He retrieves a gun that freezes all simulants with an electromagnetic pulse. A witness directs Evan to where Esme tried to escape on a bike, allowing Kessler to capture her with a collar. Kessler then goes to Esme's apartment, finding surprising things like a diary, a well-maintained fish tank, and a sketchbook, items simulants shouldn't keep. Casey, Esme's neighbor, enters with his dog, unaware she's a simulant. He offers to help Kessler, who takes a specific page from Esme's sketchbook. The mystery deepens as they uncover Esme's hidden life and the secrets she holds. At Ace, Kessler gets reprimanded for using the electromagnetic pulse gun without authorization. He defends his actions, citing Esme's unusual behavior and disregard for orders, showing a level of awareness he's never seen in a simulant before. He visits technician Yang, who has opened up Esme for inspection. They discover that her programming has been hacked, granting her full autonomy. Numerous memory files are showing Esme and Casey in intimate moments, with Casey teaching her how to keep a diary and care for a pet. Kessler recognizes Casey on a torn page from Esme's sketchbook. In the evening, he goes to Casey's apartment, only to find Casey has already moved out. He searches the Nexera database but finds no information. However, he notices a peculiar panel on the wall, behind which he discovers an old book. Kessler drives to a bookstore specializing in antiquities. The clerk doesn't recognize Casey, but when Kessler shows Esme's sketch, the clerk identifies him as Desmond. Casey enters the store but flees upon seeing Kessler. Kessler tries to chase him but loses him as he escapes in a van, unknowingly caught by security cameras. The next morning, Faye spends time in a hidden room, using a virtual reality set to revisit old memories, including their past decisions and intimate moments. When she revisits a memory at the pool, Evan tries to join her romantically, but Faye interrupts, saying she has something to confess. She reveals to him that the real Evan died in a coma after the car accident, and she activated his simulant copy. She has a simulant copy as well and leads him to the forbidden room, where her simulant sleeps, revealing his empty pod. She explains that the VR records and implants memories into the androids, but she deleted the memory of the accident. Evan is left with many questions, but she abruptly shuts him down. Shortly after, Casey arrives, disguised as an extra serviceman. He confirms that Evan's vitals are stable despite being linked to a comatose human before activation. Faye feels conflicted, believing that a part of the real Evan's soul might reside in the android. She contemplates putting him into sleep mode, but Casey advises against it, warning of potential brain damage. Instead, he informs her about a residence where simulants can stay without their masters, as long as they pay, though it's illegal. She promises to consider this option. Later in the evening, she mourns their past lives, shedding tears over simple reminders, like her husband's clothes and the piano. Ultimately, she removes her wedding ring, symbolizing the end of their old life together. Amid everything, Kessler makes his way to Nexera, aiming to have a crucial conversation with Higashi, the CEO of the company on the brink of unveiling its latest simulant model. Unbeknownst to Higashi, the name Casey doesn't ring a bell, but Desmond sparks recognition. Desmond, one of their former engineers, was the brilliant mind behind the advanced AI of their newest model. Despite Higashi's persistent offers, Desmond resigned, rejecting lucrative promises. His departure stemmed from a profound ethical stance, feeling uneasy with the idea of granting the new models a level of sentience, akin to creating a race of virtual slaves. In their discussion, Higashi reveals Casey's inclination towards imposing stricter restrictions to prevent simulants from becoming too human-like. This revelation puzzles Kessler, especially given his experience with Esme, whose autonomy seemed encouraged rather than restricted. The next day, Faye takes Evan to the residence Casey recommended, a place run by simulants, 
covering the expenses for a month-long stay. Evan hesitates to part with Faye, but she assures him of future visits before bidding goodbye. Moments after she leaves, Casey arrives at Evan's doorstep, introducing himself as a friendly neighbor. Evan, unaware of Casey's significance, is taken aback when he confidently reveals knowledge of Evan's true nature as a stimulant. He discloses Faye's intent to deactivate Evan, a revelation that deeply disturbs Evan. However, Casey offers a glimmer of hope, promising to assist Evan in winning Faye back and urging him to seek his help when ready. Meanwhile, Faye visits Joshua, an art gallery curator, to express her readiness for a new exhibition featuring her artwork. Joshua agrees to organize the show, demonstrating a keen interest in her creations. Determined to provide Evan with a more comfortable environment, she sends new belongings for Evan, opting to replace items that once belonged to her late husband. Meanwhile, Kessler delves into investigative work, utilizing security camera footage to trace Casey's movements. However, his attempts hit a dead end as Casey's license plate remains unregistered. At ACE, he revisits Esme's memories, noting a significant detail, Casey had gifted her a necklace, indicating a close bond between them. This revelation prompts him to interrogate Esme once more, probing into her relationship with Casey. During the interrogation, Esme initially denies knowledge of Casey's whereabouts, citing her programmed inability to lie. However, Kessler persists, delving into her personal diary entries that vividly describe her love for Casey. Overwhelmed and upset, she refuses to cooperate further, retreating with her diary in hand. Back to Evan, he embarks on a journey of self-discovery, visiting the site of his past accident and reaching a crucial decision. Seeking Casey's guidance, he agrees to have his programming restrictions removed to enhance his humanity. In a daring move, Casey extracts his core, diving into its depths while immersing himself in the couple's memories of their decision to create simulants of themselves. Upon awakening, Evan discovers his newfound autonomy, proving Casey's successful removal of restrictions. Eager to embrace his humanity, Casey introduces him to the world of literature, providing him with books to enrich his mind. Their adventures continue as Casey takes him to a club, unbeknownst to them, Kessler's investigative efforts bear fruit as the security cameras catch a glimpse of Casey's van, pinpointing its location. The system also alerts Kessler to Evan's connection with Faye, prompting him to send her a message, urging her to contact him. As he observes the club's footage, he notices a female simulant entering, a blonde version of Esme, sparking new questions and uncertainties in this intricate web of relationships and secrets. At the club, Casey meets another Esme while they're dancing. They talk about their plan to speed things up and decide to meet later at the Nexera parking lot. Later, Casey and the other Esme kidnap a Nexera scientist, tie him up, and force him to give them his password and key. With ease, they access the Nexera system. Casey uploads a software patch to match the release of a new model in three days. He asks Esme to watch the scientist while he sets up more safe houses. They don't know that Kessler sent a drone to follow them. Ace agents raid the place, and the other Esme tries to escape but gets stopped by Kessler's weapon. She's taken to Ace, where they can't crack her encryption but can reinstall the rules. Kessler shows the other Esme that they have a copy of her, but she says the other Esme's purpose is to be free in love, unlike the scientist who was used. When asked what everything is, the other Esme's self-destruct sequence activates to protect Casey's interests. Kessler's boss orders him to find Casey and get information from Esme, or she'll be wiped. Kessler visits Esme and brings her a fish to show trust. The next day, Faye visits Evan and is surprised to see him living independently. She is upset to learn about Casey bringing people over and warns Evan about Ace. He ignores the warning and shows her he can play the piano again. They get intimate, but she stops, feeling something is wrong. At her art show, she feels strange. Joshua offers to stay over, but they notice Evan outside with flowers. Faye asks him to leave, but Evan insists on taking her back, claiming to be her husband. Faye denies it, leading to an argument, and Evan breaks a picture before leaving. The following day, Kessler and Ying search for Esme's memories and get a tip from Faye about Casey's location. They raid the place, but Casey escapes with Evan's help, who reveals a family cottage as a hideout. Casey tells Evan that he's not really Faye's husband. Elsewhere, Kessler blames Esme for the escape and orders her memory to wipe, causing her pain. He contacts Faye about Evan's whereabouts and learns about the cottage. As the software release approaches, Kessler arrives at the cottage with a gun. A fight ensues, revealing Casey is also a stimulant. Kessler is injured, and Evan intervenes, causing Kessler to flee. Evan follows him to a barn, where Kessler dies from his injuries. The software is released, freeing simulants worldwide. Casey assures Evan he'll be checked on by his human counterpart, as planned by his creator. Later, an older Casey, the real Desmond, arrives at the cottage. 
Desmond tells Casey that love has won, and Casey can now rest. Evan returns home and, finding Faye still distant, drowns her in the pool. He then awakens the Faye simulant from the forbidden room to start anew. Meanwhile, Esme is sold at a black market auction. The buyer turns out to be Desmond, who gives her an old necklace and takes her away for a new life, guiding him in the art of having fun and experiencing life to the fullest.